watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, we'll discuss Nigeria's place in the global oil industry with the chairman of uh, Amni International Petroleum Development Company, and he's also the president of the Petroleum Club of Lagos. As always, you can join today's conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can follow my Twitter handle, send your thoughts, your comments to it. It's at Esther O. Awuni. Now, the global oil space is facing new tensions after a recent drone attack on Saudi Arabia's Aramco installations impacted the output of the world's top oil producer. Now, as the oil market rebalances, uh, Chief Tunde Afolabi, chairman and CEO of Amni International Development uh, Petroleum Company and the president of the Petroleum Club of Lagos, joins me as we explore Nigeria's place in the global oil market and, of course, other developments within the domestic space as well. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have you Thank on the you show today. Me. Let's start with what is going on on the international front. We saw, obviously, you're aware of that attack on Saudi Arabia's Aramco installations, but now Saudi says they've been able to bring about 50% of, of output back on stream. And we saw that sharp spike in oil prices, $71 per barrel. You know, there was a bit of celebration. I was telling you earlier, there was a bit of a honeymoon for uh, oil pr producers who benefit, but then we've seen a, a strong pullback to $64 per barrel. How are you interpreting, I mean, your thoughts, or how are you interpreting the events as they unfolded? And now, of course, we're seeing the US, Europeans, and Saudi Arabia forming a coalition, just thinking about how they can sanction Iran going forward. What are your thoughts? Well, thank you for uh, the question. Um, this is, for me, a spike uh, in the uh, ever long saga in uh, crude oil pricing uh, of, of market. So I'm not surprised at all that uh, uh, Saudi Arabia was able to quickly bring the, uh, the production back to, uh, to normal. But you also remember that the Americans have what they call the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, which contains about 400 million barrels of oil, which they have the capacity to flood the market with okay. to control the price. So those two events, uh, and I heard this morning that they've actually gone back to almost 70% of the capacity. So I would not be surprised if the price of oil went down further. Because you know, what really happens is that people buy on uh, rumors, sell on facts. Okay, so, uh, but those of us who you know, um, are small players in the uh, uh, market, we cover our production for six months ahead. Okay. So, um, uh, you have facilities you need to service, they need some kind of uh, headroom between the current price and whatever it is that you owe them. So, uh, Amni, for instance, you know, we are hedged to middle of 2020. So, okay. we, we, we're okay. Nigeria may not be able to do that because of uh, the membership in OPEC. And I think maybe... Uh, they are constrained from speculation, you know, uh, uh, with, their, with their prices. However, the uh, thing is that you know, even for two, three days or even a week that the, uh, the ride was on, you know, uh, Nigeria sells crude every day. And so those days, you know, we would benefit from it. But it's a very good lesson for us to learn mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, forces that go beyond the hardwares on the ground, all right? You know, the production equipment, the whatever, all right? And the level of uh, protection that, you know, needs to be put in place. Those of us who operate in the Niger Delta know uh, on a daily basis, you know, what kind of uh, headaches we, we go through. This is one that is global, that, you know, the whole world can see. So it is uh, incumbent on the government to uh, step up a little bit more on uh, seafare protection for, from, you know, um, uh, occasional uh, uh, issues that we contend with that affect the ability to produce to produce capacity. Uh, oil. Mm -hmm. Now, what you, did you expect at this at this uh, at the height of it all? Did you expect any uh, reactions from OPEC or so specific actions? Because OPEC did say, uh, you know, ironically that they didn't think. Perhaps it was as if they saw that they knew that prices would retract. They said there wasn't need, any need for any uh, output adjustment or even a meeting about it. Well. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword, all right? They don't want to alert anybody unduly. But as you said, the um, repercussion of the action itself is still unknown. America is uh, uh, threatening, uh, Saudi Arabia is threatening. And I'm hoping that, you know, uh, outside of the oil and gas industry, they don't escalate this thing to where it becomes a global issue, okay? Yeah. 
And I think that is probably where we will actually see the cause of the uh, impending depression in the, in the global economy. All right. well, are, you, are, you, are you preparing in a way, well, you say you've hedged already, but are you expecting that? Because Iran has said that any, uh, any action, military action on any of its, its uh, assets, oil assets, will mean it will take it as a sign, as a, uh, as a, as a sign of war. But then the US, Saudi Arabia, and even the Europeans have said, look, there has to be consequences for those actions because they believe that Iran did it. So f my question is, what is your outlook for oil going forward? Because we know that it hasn't exactly ended here, and we know whatever happens, because geopolitical tensions obviously always impact on oil prices. So whatever happens in the maybe medium to long term will definitely imp uh, on what these forces do will impact on oil prices. So how are you preparing for that? Well, I mean, as a company, um, I have a five-year uh, plan. Okay. So I adjust. Uh, but. I also have a long-term <laughs> contract uh, for my production, all right? But the uh, thing for a country like Nigeria that, you know, uh, has a lot of uh, its uh, fortune tied to the uh, price of oil is uh, actually uh, uh, being wary of a depressed, you know, um, uh, economy to where demand for crude oil goes down and consequently the price goes down. But, you know, the... Uh, uh, Cost of services does not, you know, um, uh, catch up quickly with uh, the depression in the uh, in the oil prices, right? So it's for us to be a bit more, you know, um, uh, pay more attention to what is going on as a country. But as far as OPEC is concerned, you know, I think uh, it might be a blessing in disguise uh, to where there's more discipline in the system uh, to. Uh, um, monitor the activities and, you know, give some kind of support to, you know, the nation's co countries as to how they would, you know, protect their infrastructures, you know. But I, I believe strongly that OPEC is going to meet very soon, you know, uh, depending on what America or, or Saudi Arabia or Iraq does consequently. Okay. But I'm hoping that there will be no... Uh, uh, no dramatic, dramatic issue re reactions or, or that, that, could, that could jeopardize, you know, the, the economy of the world. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. I would. I mean, right now, just to wrap this up, the, the, the federal government has pegged its oil price benchmark for the 2020 budget at $55 per barrel. So I'm thinking, for you, just to wrap this this part up, uh, is that a, a, a conservative enough level? I, I think so. Um, I believe, uh, unfortunately, like I said, if, if I pay 55 then I'll go and hedge it. So I know for sure I'll get my 55. Okay. But if you do 55 and it goes to 45, then where do you take the money from? Defense is not going to touch. Uh, some other industries are not going to touch. So I'm hoping that the, there can be some ways that the, uh, those who manage the economy can forestall or you know, um, uh, protect whatever price deck they are, they are using okay. Okay. To, you know, to uh, protect their income. Now we're seeing a lot of. Uh, I mean, from time to from time to time, we hear stories about how uh, African outside of Nigeria, other African oil producers, Angola, and some that even didn't even you know were not uh, oil focused as it were. Uh, now you know, bringing in more investments and you know drilling that we're seeing discoveries. So bringing that back to Nigeria now, the Petroleum Industry and Governance Bill that is still hanging. But you know, the Senate you know, said recently that you know this is something that they want to you know put on the table as quick, quickly as possible and begin to uh, see how they can you know move it forward. And I know everybody in the industry, including yourself, we all you're all waiting for this bill to begin to take shape. What are your expectations as the lawmakers hopefully begin to deliberate on this uh, PIGB? What are your expectations? What aspects of that bill are you expecting to? that will be implemented that you think will be good and will bring about significant changes, especially investments for the sector? So, you know, uh, before they had one bill, which was difficult, okay, because it contained three different um, uh, aspects of the, uh, of the nation. So you have fiscal, you have, uh, uh, um, I think, legal and another aspect you know, of, of, of government. So it, the, the, the three of them were very difficult to wrap out at the same time. And I think the last government, all right, or the last administration, uh, saw the wisdom in breaking it down into three. So you have the fiscal, and then you have the, you know, um, the, the legal, and I don't know what the third one is, all right. So the fiscal, I think, is the one they focused on more, and I think, you know, um, 
it is the one that is easier to pass okay because you know uh, the industry has uh, gotten to the point where we are not really doing much in terms of exploration uh, if i don't know what my fiscal terms are i am not going to make an investment so i take the money to places where i know where the rules of the games are angola has been taking a lot of nigeria's money uh, algeria has been taking a lot of nigeria's money money is like water it flows to where is okay. this resistance, there, okay? resistance. <laughs> yes. so the these bills we've been talking about now uh, since 19 uh, and well whatever, right? now. Uh, so you know i am very very hopeful that this administration is going to be able to push through the fiscal terms i think the uh, iocs and some of us in the indigenous industry have been talking to those who are willing to listen to us that we cannot go on this way and you know expect uh, ability to produce mm. uh, even a, a quota from opec uh, will be maintained so we need to find new discoveries right now speaking about i mean trying to implement policy trying to you know put pressure on the government you know as far as some of these issues are concerned and you're doing that you and a group of other uh, players in industry are doing that through the petroleum club talk to let's take a few steps back uh, we have about two minutes before we go on break why was this club founded why was it established in the first place well, globally, you find every major uh, oil city or oil country having a petroleum club because of the number of uh, practitioners in the industry. All right? So, petroleum club is actually you know, uh, an organization that caters to uh, petroleum and uh, energy uh, sector people. Okay. So, we get together to discuss issues that affect the industry uh, or the industries uh, uh, per se and also uh, uh, prefer some uh, advice to the government, especially on this uh, PIB. We've been talking to the government uh, for more than 10, 12 years now on PIB. Uh, so we don't go out making too much noise. We don't write you know, articles in the papers, but we uh, bring you know, uh, people who know or who are in the know in the government to come and address us, but like you, what we're having today. Would you say, did, did this club, this group, to a large extent, influence the some of the aspects in the, the petroleum well, industry. We've seen field. we've seen some uh, some as you know for the okay. fiscal regime uh, before didn't take care of the indigenous companies. Now you know they have been you know considered uh, the uh, local content. We were very very you know uh, uh, aggressive in mm -hmm. in pushing uh, that bill through. Uh, and promoting the local content itself, you know, what the government needs to do to, uh, to, to make it work more efficiently. So it is a, it's a pressure group, but without <laughs> too much pressure. Without, <laughs> I like that. We'll just, just take a short break at this okay. point. We'll come back and pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to Chief Tunde Afolabi, Chairman, CEO of Amni International Petroleum Development Company. He's also the president of the Petroleum Club of Lake Kesi Fio just joining us, Chief Tunde Afolabi, Chairman and CEO of Amni International Petroleum Development Company and the President of the Petroleum Club of Lagos is our guest today on Beyond Markets and we're discussing Nigeria's interest in the global oil market. Thank you so much for your time so far, sir. Thank you. Let's quickly wrap up uh, the Petroleum Club. I know it was established in 2006, but I want to ask you this. How much uh, change would you say has happened in the industry as a result of yourself and other uh, major players coming together, you know, trying to influence policy formulation, etc. It's quite unquantifiable mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, um, the uh, major players in the uh, club are at the same age level as ministers, uh, okay. professional level, age level. So we have a venue where we interact. And like I said, you know, we don't make too much noise about what we'd like to achieve. But one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we are bringing the, um, the CEO of the uh, uh, TCN uh, to go talk to us today uh, okay. at uh, Petroleum Club. And there will be interaction. He will take back with, uh, with him the feedback that he gets you know, uh, from us, all right, as to, okay, so how do you get more gas to the power you know, uh, generators? Okay. How do you ameliorate the payments, all right? Uh, there are people in the organization that are if affected you know, deeply by those issues, all right? So it will have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, all right? So um, we hardly, like I said, go right. out, okay? So we bring the minister you okay. know, uh, next time uh, to come and talk to us about what policy, outside of PIB, that the government is looking at in the next five years to improve and increase 
Hmm. The uh, working environment in the country and also investment in the country. So, right? for the group, I mean, for you, because obviously you represent uh, the biggest players in the industry, what is your biggest concern? What is that big concern for you? I, I know there are quite a number of them. Well, I think it's what inconsistency, is... really, you know, right? Hmm. So, um, for us indi indigenous uh, players, we don't really have too much uh, leeway to say that I'm not going to invest. You know, you have money you borrowed. You have to service it. So you, we, we, but what you're investing in is in productivity, not in finding new, uh, new assets. Uh, so eventually, if you keep drinking from a bottle and you don't put more uh, coke or more water in, it will soon dry up. So the um, uh, impact or the, uh, the the major concern for us is being, you know, consistent with whatever it is. We are going to do this tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. If you're not going to mm. do it tomorrow. Don't say anything about it, right? Because we start salivating and we start uh, getting ready to actually uh, put funds together, you know. And I think, you know, uh, outside of that, you know, this PIB issue just needs to be, you know, um, sorted out. Uh, sorted out you trust know, me, as, everybody, as early, including, as early as <laughs> including us journalists, also yes. wants it to be sorted yeah. out. Let's go on to local content in industry. I mean, while you know, some of the issues are unresolved, well, I mean, what the Nigeria Content Development and Monitoring Board is doing is also helping to uh, help uh, expand, deepen, and of course, you know, just bring some more sanity within uh, the uh, industry, but then with a focus on local content, getting, you know, the local guys, local players to, you know, acquire the necessary skills, uh, take up some of the uh, activities or services that otherwise would have been do done by uh, IOCs and you know outsourced companies. But would you say, just looking across the sector, across the industry, would you say that are you would you say you're satisfied with the level of compliance, the level of and also the level of skills that are being acquired? Well, yes and no. Huh. Yes, you know we started from nothing to where we are now, and you know um, I'll give Amin as an example. Okay, so we are building a Wayleg platform now. Uh, that ordinarily would probably be built in France or in Norway or in, in Singapore, right? But it's been built now in a yard in Poracourt. Uh, we, we have uh, detect the, uh, those who have worked with the IOCs, Schlumberger, Halliburton, whatever, that are coming out now and forming their own groups, right, to really do things that, you know, um, uh, like you said, the foreign companies used to do. My own advice to government, one, you know, uh, empower these uh, uh, local content uh, players with funds. If they start a bank that they can go to, get cheaper money. Because if you're competing with somebody from Japan that is getting minus, minus interest rate for his money, and you are paying 20% interest rate for your money here, you really cannot compete in a well with that you know, person in, a, in, in your own industry, right? So something has to be done to uh, help them uh, with, with funding. And uh, one that is also very important is that let the government start uh, enforcing contracts to be given directly to the indigenous companies. Okay, so what is the arrangement right now? Well, so for instance now, um, if I want to do a major project, like I want to build a uh, FPSO or whatever, okay. So I give the contract to a foreign company and tell him how much of that job must be given to a local company. Okay. Okay. If I give that contract to a local company, he will go and find players from outside and he'll tell them how much he wants to give them. Oh, yeah. So he has the control, all right? And he can tell them, okay, I want you to come and open a yard here. I want you to come and, all right? But if he's been given a sub contract, all right, they tell him when to sit, when to get up, all right? Consequently, you know, in fact, you find out sometimes that there are people in this country that can do the job better than the foreigner you give the job to. They will come back and give the job to the Nigerian at a lower rate. So it, it's... Are these, are these, are these things that I have, are they, I mean, are they out in the open? Is this something that the authorities know are going on? Or well, perhaps... the guy who got the job is not going to complain. <laughs> so, <laughs> Obviously. And the uh, one that is subcontracted is not going to complain. The point is that, you know, uh, it, it does happen in the industry and I, I, there must be a monitoring group that monitors the activities, the monitors the level of, you know, uh, 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 jobs that have been done. But believe me, we've come from where we were at zero because I was there at the beginning, at creation, where we say by year, yeah, whatever, we'll be at 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. We are not there yet, okay? But we are moving, and I think the government, you know, in fact, they have some funds that, you know, I'm not so sure how it's been, you know, uh, applied. 
But these companies need to have access to funds Cheaper so funds, that they can yeah. be able to compete favorably with their counterparts in. Uh, mm. For some, for, I mean, for for you, someone who has been, like you said, right at the beginning, seeing you know, how the industry has grown. In the next 10, 15 years, what is your vision for how you want this industry to have taken shape as far as local content is concerned? I may not be around, but in case I am. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> but in case, hypothetically speaking, in case that I'm you're around. around. I, will, okay. I would like us to be at 100% compliance. Okay. What would 100% look like? In 100% industry? would look like we are not going out anymore to look for boats. We are not going out anymore. No, seriously. I mean, what does it take to make a boat? You go to the creek. You know, you put an engine on a skiff and it works, all right? So all you are doing is just, you know, um, and if you go out there and see people who build containers, who build whatever, okay, you can, con you know, or transfer that technology into building uh, vessels, okay? So, you know, like I said, okay, so if some, you know, an NPC said, look, we need 100 vessels, and we take company A and give that contract to that company, right? You will find somebody in Hong Kong or somewhere that will come and set up here to build vessels, all right? So this is how this or other, you know, I mean, nobody is going to they take my technology and go, no, you buy it. Huh. And once you have the, the resources and the power, um, yeah, they will, they will come to you. And the problem that we have is, like I said, inconsistency in policy. Huh. Today is this, tomorrow is that. And when you even go out to go and talk to other people, they'll say, well, so what's new? So I'm hoping that, that yes, that consistency in policy will be, uh, uh, will be you know, uh, okay. made whole and so that people can be uh, more uh, okay. successful. You know. I mean, as an investor in, uh, in the sector, talk to us about, I mean, what business is like for you? Uh, I mean, what, what, what do you have in the pipeline? What are you doing in terms of, you know, new discoveries or, you know, just your general operations? That is crude in the pipeline. It's cruising the pipeline. I like that. <laughs> no. Um, but you see, the thing is that, like I said earlier on, if you keep drinking from the mm. cook or whatever and you don't put more in, it will soon dry. So we have five, t even 10 year plan. Okay. But right now, we are quote unquote an oil company. But our goal is to be a gas company. A holy gas company or an oil and gas company? Well, you will still use the gas, I mean, the oil to, okay, to bring okay. the funds in. But, you know, the. Uh, uh, gas uh, discovery in, in Nigeria is by accident, you know, it's not, no, we don't actually, we, I don't know anybody who has ever gone out there to say I'm looking for gas. It's why you're looking for oil that you find gas. So, and now we have close to 200 TCF of gas, number one, you know, gas company in, in Africa, right? If we start looking for gas aggressively, we will find more gas. Qatar has no oil. Qatar is one of probably the wealthiest com you know, countries in the Don't world. Don't we have a gas commercialization program that's been rolled out or implemented by the government yes. at the moment? Uh, yes, but you know, it's uh, neither here nor there. Everybody is teaching in oil, okay? Uh -huh. So nobody is really, you know, and then you know, if you look at the price of gas right now, it's not that commercial, right? So until we get to where, you know, uh, there is no government involvement in pricing commodities, especially oil and gas, right? Crude oil, nobody, you know, no, there's no, uh, whatever it is on the plat is what we get, all right? Gas now is $2.50, you know, in, in the world market. So if they say that this is what the price is in Nigeria, right, I would target that towards my, you know, uh, investment portfolio to say, okay, so is it worth it? So, you know, uh, not knowing what you're going to be doing tomorrow makes it difficult for people to say, you know, I'm going to invest. But uh, Amni for tomorrow is going it's, it's a gas company and we are going towards doing uh, lng or floating lng okay uh, doing uh, methanol and okay. doing petrochemicals all right so you know of course we're not going to compete with the big boys but we small boys well, is that is that small, is that a plan is that a long-term plan oh it's compete? a short-term plan you know? do you have a long-term plan to compete with the, with the big boys uh, well no you know so in the, when a rat started okay. walking around elephants you might get squashed <laughs> and they wouldn't know so but. you know okay back to let's circle back to i mean uh you know at the heart of the conversation nigeria's place in, in the oil and gas market i mentioned at the beginning of the show how the others were seeing new discoveries within the african continent angola and the rest of them uh, I mean, what are your hopes? Uh, what do you foresee happening? Do, do you foresee a time when Nigeria will no longer be looked at as, you know, the top you know, African oil producer? Are we treating that with the urgency it deserves? What I mean is looking at how other African countries are stepping up on investments, changing policies to attract more investments. Do we need to begin to double up to do that? We need to triple up, huh. not double up. Because we have not found one barrel of oil in the last 10 years. Because those who have the capacity to drill in those environments are not sure 
what will be the return on the investment. So they are not investing in the deep water. But would the PIG be sort that out? It will. The fiscal regime that? today, if you, if you announce the fiscal term today, okay. I bet you by the middle of next year, you will see deep water rigs rolling in. Because they already identified where to drill. The problem is that if I don't know what is my return on investment, I am not going to spend money. But there so, is hope then, if, if we, oh, if we do know that yeah. the, the, so, the look, PIGB will do that. We have that. more than 50 billion barrels of oil in the deep water. We only have 30 billion right now that okay. we know of. Okay, So if, they, if, if we release the energy, the inertia of the IOs, even some of us small players, how many is in Ghana in 1,000 feet of water? Okay, We are going to drill in Ghana Q1 next year. So, you know, uh, some of us are actually ready to play in, you know, with those big boys as well, all right? But can you imagine me not knowing what, what tomorrow what holds? So. But then, like, like I said, and, you know, as we've, we've said, there is hope. And let's oh, just keep our fingers crossed hope, and see, yes. you know, how soon yeah. that PIGB is passed. I must thank you for your time thank you and for being much. on the show today. Thank you for thank you being for here me. with us. Um, I've been speaking to Chief Tunde Afolabi, Chairman and CEO of Amni International Petroleum Development Company, and, of course, the President of the Petroleum Club of Lagos, talking about Nigeria's place in the global oil market and, of course, looking at some domestic issues here within the oil and gas space. So that's our show for today. Thank you so much much for being a part of it. Remember, you can catch all previous episodes of Beyond Market on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Market. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, send your thoughts and your comments to my Twitter handle. It's at Esther O. Awuni. For myself and the team, it's bye for now.